he is our way maker. Whenever our paths aren't sure or we're not sure of ourselves, our life's taking us down all these wrong routes, God is the way maker. And if we just ask him, he'll give us that right path. And you'll see it all through the Psalms.
Father. You are our way maker, and you're our good, good Father. Thank you so much for the love you pour into our lives, Lord. May we just be enhanced by the word that you're going to bring through Mike right now, Lord. Bless this time we have, Lord, and we hope to honor you in everything we do. We love you so much. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I have to say one thing before Mike gets up here. How about our new keyboard player? <laughs> Woohoo! That's Flip. Thank you, Flip. All right. You may be seated. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love. So Flip became a member last week, and he's up playing keyboards this week. That's pretty awesome. And overdue. Well, happy Father's Day again to all the fathers and to everybody who has a father. That's one or two of us, I know that. Oh, now, if you didn't get a sermon note on your way in, raise your hand, we'll get one to you online, you can get them in the message center, we need a, one over here, anybody else, sermon notes going once, going twice, this is your last opportunity now, sermon, no, sermon notes going once, going twice, sold, sold to the man in the red shirt, ah, well we are on week three of a series called Walking with Jesus 2021. I like these walking with Jesus. We're, we're, we're going to be going through the Gospel of Luke. We're not going through it extensively. One over there. Not going through it extensively. I'm picking passages. Oh, I'm one up here. Hey, we'll get you going all over the place, pal. I need the steps. That's the sign of our times, isn't it? I need the steps. <laughs> So we're, we're looking at the Gospel of Luke and um, picking out various stories in, in Luke. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about the incredible event at the beginning of Jesus' ministry where he goes into the, um, the synagogue and he reads out of Isaiah and, and proclaims to them all, I am the fulfillment of this prophecy. It was his announcement of the beginning of, of his ministry. So I've come from God. I've, I've come to... to make the blind see, to heal, and to bring the Lord's favor. And they took him out of there, and, and they wanted to throw him off a cliff. So that was week one. Last week, we looked at um, the beginning of the calling of some of Jesus' disciples. And what we discovered last week is that the calling was not an event. It was a process. And we looked at three of them, but there are actually four times that Jesus actually calls His disciples. So if Jesus is called into your life and you didn't respond, He'll call again. He'll call again. But the sooner you respond, the better it is for you. Now, you can get any of those messages online at our, our um, website, lakewayonline.org, or you could go to the App Store, Google Play, look for Lakeway Church, and you can listen to them online. You can download them. This morning, I'm going to talk about signs. Now, I had a, a long passage in Luke that I was going to do, but as I was, you know, sometimes you're going through it and, and I couldn't get it all in there, so I had to kind of pare it down. So you need to come back next week to get the other half of this one. So signs. So this is sign part one. What is a sign? Well, a sign's an indicator, right? It, it's something that, a, a signal or a warning, it can give you direction, it can tell you not to go somewhere, it can tell you, give you instructions. It pervades some form of information. Some signs are stupid. Some signs are funny. Some signs are confusing. It's funny. I'm doing this, and this week, I, I got a whiteboard, and in, in the whiteboard was this. <laughs> Caveat, please stay away from children. Be careful of devouring children. I'm glad that was in there because I was feeling kind of hungry. <laughs> Here's a couple more here. Another one. <laughs> Wash inside out. Remove child. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know, before you put this in the, in the washing machine, remove the child. A couple more here. I like this one. Fishing for children only. Limit three. I always wonder where children came from. There's your answer. No pets allowed. All pets must be on a leash. Sometimes signs are just downright confusing. I like this one. I was addicted to the hokey pokey, but... 
I turned myself around. I found healing. <laughs> you know, people have been obsessed by signs from, from way back, you know, all the way into antiquity, looking to the heavens, looking to the shape of the stars, astrology. And I don't know if they do it now, but back some years ago, you know, it was, what's your sign? Like, we're connected because we are under the same birth sign or, or some weird thing. Maybe you couldn't be under the same birth sign. But signs tell us something. Sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly, sometimes more emotionally. You know, sometimes you just, you just have a feeling, right? It's like something's not right about this. And, and that can be a sign. We read signs through our senses. You know, Hollywood knows this, don't it? One of the things I don't like about Hollywood movies, most movies, to be honest, is they give everything away with the music. You know, you get to a scene and you know it's going to be scary because all of a sudden it goes... And the baddie's got a B on his forehead, just in case you didn't know. And uh, it, it's always the same. You know, it's like, gosh, get a new theme here. But the Lord communicates to us through signs. Sometimes He uses His Word. There'll be a sign in His Word. Sometimes it could be through prayer. Sometimes it can be you come to church and you're singing a song and, and, and the emotion of the song gets to you and, and God speaks to you through that. Other times it can be circumstances, things that happen around you, happen to you, happen through you. But the Lord speaks to us in signs. So today we're going to look at a, a little passage of Scripture, just a few verses. Now on your notes, it probably says Luke 12 to 5, 12 to 26. We're not going to go to 26. Half of this is going to be next week. But we're going to look at two short, one short passage of Scripture that Jesus used as a sign. So if you've got your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 5, verse 12 through 20, well, whatever it is. I think I put it, did I put it in the notes, the Scripture? I did, so you don't have to do anything now. I'm making it far too easy for you. So now this is immediately in, in the Gospel of Luke. This immediately follows the passage we looked at last week where he's on the beach. He sees the guys fishing. He goes out in the boat. He preaches a sermon. They have a fantastic catch, and he says, come join me. Follow me. Now, in a linear sense, this probably wasn't immediately after that, but it's immediately after this in the Gospel of Luke. It says, in one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed down with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Now, I want to take a minute. Sometimes I like to do a different kind of teaching. And because I had to kind of split this one in two, I'm, I'm going to take an opportunity here to teach you something, some, some practical Bible teaching. I'll sometimes have people ask me, what's the difference between all these different versions of the Bible? Which Bible should I get? What, what's the difference? And I've taught on this before. It's not so much about the translation of the Bible as it is about the, the style, the writing style. So, shall I do it this way? I need three volunteers, three fathers. I promise you don't have to say anything. Come on up. Look at this guy. Yeah, me. Pick me. <laughs> he likes volunteering. Got two fathers. I need one more father. Come on, Flip. <laughs> all right. So let me think here. Um, this one goes all, whoa, no, it goes all the way over here. So Flip, I want you to stand on that end of the stage so people can see that. This one goes in the middle. This one goes over there. So if you stand over there, you stand here. So styles, and this is in your notes. Which is the best Bible? Well, really, it, it depends on what you want to get from it. So there are these three styles of writing. On one end, you've got word for word. This is where they've gone to the Greek, and they've tried to translate it as best they can, word for word, right from the Greek. Now, it's got pros, it's got cons. The, con the pro is obviously it's as accurate as you can get to the Greek. The cons, not every word translates well. We have words in our language that they don't have in Greek or Hebrew. They have words in their language that we don't have. For instance, the word love. There's four different words for love in Greek. There's only one in our language. So that doesn't translate very well. It's also very difficult to read because it's word to, for word. The sentence structure can be a little bit difficult. Um, 
And then the other thing, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in a second, and I'm not going to stay on this too long, so don't you be going to sleep, is that sometimes the Hebrews and the Greeks like to use sayings like we use the sayings. But if you're not familiar with the saying, you don't know what they're talking about. So that's word for word. King James Bible, New King James Bible, New American Standard over there. On the other end, you've got thought for thought. Oh, look, I gave you the big, nice words. Hey, so if you're having coffee with one of your Christian friends and they're talking about the Bible, you can say, well, is yours formal equivalents, functional equivalents, or optimal equivalents? And they won't know what you're talking about, and that'll end the conversation. <laughs> so over here, you've got thought for thought. What this is, uh, that they look at the same Greek Scripture, and they realize, okay, you can't translate these words straight across. What's this Scripture trying to say? What are they trying to teach us here? And, they, and it's written down thought by thought, functional equivalence. The, the pros on this one, easy to read. The cons, and there's a big con, they already did the thinking. So somebody's looking at it, and then, well, this, this is what this means. And I'm going to put down what it means. It kind of takes away a little bit from the Holy Spirit talking to you directly. But it's very easy to read, and it really does get across the essence of, of what they want to get across. Now, I'm going to come to you. I'm not leaving you out. You'll be in there in a minute. Now, here's where this kind of gets difficult. So I talked about the saying. We have a saying. People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, right? We all know what that means. But if you translate that into another language and they don't have that saying in their language, it's like, what are you talking about? So you think back to that, um, that account in the Bible where they bring an adulteress to Jesus. And they're testing Jesus and they want to see if Jesus will accuse her. Because in the law, it said, she's supposed to be stoned. So they're testing Jesus. Now just imagine if Jesus had that saying, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. So we're going to change it up. You know, they bring her to him, and, and, and he's down. He's writing on the ground, and, and he looks at the Pharisees, and he says, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Now, if you were looking at this word for word, and you didn't have that saying, you might be thinking, what? Why? What, what does this have to do with houses? And I, I, I don't get it. Way over here, the guy that's translating this thought for thought, people in glass, glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Well, I know that the, I know the Old Testament says we're supposed to stone the adulteress. I think I know what Jesus means here. Throw accurately. <laughs> you don't want to be breaking the window, so if you're stoning someone, make sure you hit them good. You don't want, so you can kind of get, you see where these things change. So then right in the middle, you've got what's called balanced, where they've tried to take a little bit of both. Over here, you've got um, the New Living Bible, which I really like. And if, if, if I were to send you across the parking lot, you'd have the message, which is interesting to read, but I don't recommend reading the message if you don't have another Bible with you because it can get out there. So right in the middle here, you have balance. This would be the New International Version, the um, Holman Christian Standard Bible, where they try to take the thought for thought and the word for word and, and kind of blend it to a certain degree. That's why I like the New International. Okay, gentlemen, you can, you can, you can sit down. Now, those are your prizes. You could take those. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> now, the reason that I bring this up is as I was studying this Scripture this week, I had three different versions of the Scripture. And, and I found it just interesting how even in a simple passage of Scripture, how, how it can change a little bit. So, we take that very first passage there. So up there, I've got the New King James. So that's your word for word. The New Living Translation, thought for thought, and the NIV, balanced. And you can see from this one verse, I thought it was interesting, and you'll see where I'm going to go with this in a minute, how it changes it up slightly. So over here, and it happened when he was in a certain city. Over on the other side, in one of the villages. Okay, what's in between a village and a city? A town. Look at the middle one. <laughs> While Jesus was in one of the towns. So what it's saying is some place where people live that's not the country. 
It's not a farm. So could it be city? Could it, it doesn't really matter. That behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. Jesus met a man with, advanced, with an advanced case of leprosy. A man came along who was covered with leprosy. So kind of similar, but th there's little nuances there. Little, did Jesus meet this guy? Did this guy meet Jesus? Well, what happened here? It seems, not that I believe this deeply, that it was a chance encounter. I don't think any encounters with Jesus was a chance encounter. But this guy wasn't there specifically looking for Jesus. I don't know that Jesus was looking for this guy. But they, they come into contact with one another. Over here it says, and he fell on his face. Now there's word for word. You know, he, he's got leprosy, he's, he's sick, he sees Jesus, he trips, he falls, bang, hits the ground. Jesus, oh, oh, my nose. Over here, when the man saw Jesus, he bowed down with his face to the ground. He's worshiping Jesus. In the middle, when he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground. The key point here is that this man understood who Jesus was. He went into an immediate stance or an immediate pose of worship. He got on his knees. He bowed down. He put his face to the ground. You don't do that for a teacher of the law or a Pharisee or a pastor. You do that for God. This guy knew who Jesus was and implored him, saying, begging to be healed and begged him. Now, neither of these two passages, these two passages have the word healed in it, and this is where it kind of tweaked me, but the one over there has the word healed, and that's what caught my attention. And it says, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Lord, if you are willing, sorry, you can heal me and make me clean. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, I like this one over here because it better catches the essence of what is going on here. There's, there's a similarity and yet a difference between healing and being made clean, and it's important. There's so much in this passage of Scripture. I love this. First thing that I noticed, the guy didn't ask Jesus for anything. He, he, you get this meeting between this fellow and Jesus. He didn't ask him for anything, but he made a statement. He said, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. That is a statement of faith. It's an acknowledgement that Jesus is Lord. He's Lord. It's an acknowledgement of Christ's authority. If you are willing, you, you are, you can. And it's an acknowledgement of Christ's ability. You can heal me and make me clean. The other two versions don't use the word heal. Sorry, these two versions. I like this version because it catches the essence of what is going on. There's this idea that you need to be cleaned. You know, to be cleaned, un, being unclean is kind of repugnant, isn't it? You know, if you meet someone who's sick, it's okay, you've got sympathy for them. But you meet someone who's unclean, there's kind of like a, ugh. Maybe they smell. They don't look good. It's like, oh, I don't mind sick. I don't like unclean. Now, it's bad enough to have a serious skin disease, but there's a lot more to this than just sickness. You know, being unwell is one thing, but being unclean is a whole different thing. It's easier to sympathize with one than the other. People who had a skin disease like this were shunned. They had to go live on the outside of town. They had to live in a, in a colony, a leper colony on the outside of town. They couldn't mix with people. You were not allowed to touch them. Can you imagine that? You get sick, and no one is allowed to touch you anymore. Touch is so important, isn't it? But it's against God's law to touch that person. Go to the outside of town. And what makes it worse is that there was this idea that this uncleanliness came through sin. Not only are you diseased, not only are you unclean, but you're a dirty, unclean sinner. Get yourself on out of here. You got what you deserve. 
That's not very nice, is it? (laughs) That makes it even more incredible what Jesus did next. Now, let me set the scene. Chance that this, this encounter is, is a one-on-one encounter is pretty slim. Jesus didn't go anywhere where there wasn't a crowd of people following him around. So he meets this guy. There's a whole bunch of people around Jesus. That doesn't say that in this scripture, but you can pretty much guarantee it. Is it. When he walked out of the house in the morning, they're waiting for him. When he went in the house at night, they're out there waiting for him to come out in the morning. That's how it was for Jesus. So there are all kinds of people watching. So when this man saw Jesus, he bows with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. And then in verse 13, it says, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Now, I don't know, you know, walking with Jesus, I always like to put myself there. It's like last week with the fishing. You know, we don't think about things like flies. As soon as you start putting that in the picture, it's like, ugh. So this guy's unclean. He probably does smell. He doesn't look very good. Leprosy makes you white. And sometimes parts of your skin is literally peeling off. Your flesh is peeling off. You're out there outside town. Jesus comes along. He sees the guy. The guy sees him. The guy bows down. Jesus, I know who you are. You're Lord. You can, you can make me clean if you so choose. And then Jesus reaches out to touch him. I imagine everybody around goes, What are you doing, Jesus? Hope he doesn't touch me now. Here's the thing, though. Jesus didn't need to touch him. There are all kinds of examples where Jesus healed people. He wasn't even in the same town as they were. Roman centurion comes to Jesus one time, says, my, my servant is sick. You can heal him. And Jesus says, go, you head on home, man. Your faith is good. He's healed. He didn't need to touch this guy. He didn't even need to be in the same house, the same town as this guy. And I, and I love the, the, the order of the Scripture here. If you look at it, Jesus reaches out to touch him before he heals him. He says, he reached out and he touched him. Jesus knew exactly what this man needed at every level. He needed spiritual healing. He needed physical healing. He needed emotional healing. This man needed to feel a human touch. I wonder how long it's been. It's like, wow, you touched me. But not just any man. He's already bowed. This is is God. God just touched unclean, dirty, sinner me. Nobody else would touch me. He needed to hear words of acceptance. I am willing. And he needed physical healing. You know, real healing is is so much more about, more than, than simply fixing a person's physical condition. There's so much more. Healing is about reaching into the soul. Healing is about connecting with the Spirit. Healing is about touching the hurt and the heart. And Jesus did all of those things in this simple act when He encountered this person. Sometimes you can read these little passages of Scripture, and you can miss out on on really what's going on here, how deep this really is, how significant that it is. And I love this. Jesus said, I am willing. Now, he didn't qualify it. He didn't say to the guy, get your messed up life sorted, buddy. Get the sin out of your life. Come on back and we'll have another conversation. Because right now, I'm no, no, none of that stuff. The guy acknowledges Jesus, you are Lord. I believe you can do this. I just don't know if you're willing to. Jesus says, I'm willing. No qualifications. You bowed down to me. You accepted me as Lord. You knew that I was able to do this. I am willing. What wonderful, wonderful words. 
You know, the Lord is with the brokenhearted. He's with the afflicted. He's with the hurting. He's with the outcast. He's with the fallen. He's with the sinner. And if you're any of those things, and by the way, we all are to some degree, then He is with you. Jesus says, come to me. I'm willing. I'm willing to touch you. I'm willing to bring healing to you. I'm willing to forgive you. I'm willing to cleanse you. Will you come to me? And the question really becomes, are we willing to receive wholeness and forgiveness? I mean, look at what this man did, and this is right in your notes there. First, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. He wasn't too proud. He's out living on the outside of town. He's a dirty, rotten, stinky s sinner. But he humbled himself before Jesus. He bowed down with his face to the ground. Second, he accepted this is an important word. He accepted Jesus as Lord. He said, if, if you're willing, I know, I know you're the one. You see, there's a, lot, there's a big difference between accepting Jesus as Lord and acknowledging Jesus as Lord. We have all kinds of situations in the Bible where demons even acknowledge Jesus as Lord. When He's casting them out of people, they say, oh, we know who you are. You're the Son of God. You're the Lord. You're the Messiah. They accepted, they, they acknowledged Him. They didn't accept Him. This person accepted Jesus as Lord. That's a whole different step. That's to say, I, I believe who you are, Jesus, and I'm going to live as though I believe who you are. Third, he believed that Jesus could heal him and cleanse him. He says, you can heal me. You can make me clean. And Jesus reaches out, touches him, and heals him. And then in verse 14, Jesus does something really strange here. He instructs him to not tell anyone what had happened. Now, put yourself in this guy's shoes, okay? Just, just put yourself in this guy's shoes for a minute. You're a dirty outcast. Nobody wants to talk to you. You've got to live on the outside of town. You've got a disease. Not only do you have a disease, but you are a bad sinner. And you get to that point, you're with people, you start to believe that. I'm not worthy. I'm unworthy. I deserve this. Because we all have sin, don't we? And you're going to look at yourself and you're going to think, well, that's because of so-and-so. I did that. I deserve this. So how do you feel? You probably feel unclean. You probably feel guilt. You probably feel a lot of anger. Sad. And then somehow, some way, you hear about this Jesus man. You've never met him, but you hear about him. Now, people say he's come from God, and he can heal the sick. He can perform miracles. And you're thinking, hmm, you know, maybe you know somebody who knows somebody who's been impacted by Jesus. And you might be wondering, I wonder if it's true. I wonder if this Jesus can really heal. I wonder if He can change lives. I wonder if He, if he can bring about wholeness. And you're thinking about people, you know, because people will exaggerate, right? They want things. Sometimes if you believe hard enough, you can make it seem like it's real. I want it to be real. I want this Jesus to be real. And he might be thinking, well, you know, the cycle babble. They think Jesus is real, and because they think Jesus is real, now they're healed, and, but they're not really healed. And, and you've got all kinds of doubts going on in your mind. But deep down inside, you're wondering and you're hoping, I hope this is real. I hope this Jesus can heal me. Could he make me clean? Maybe. But the question is, would he be willing? After all, I'm not really deserving 
of his mercy. Have you ever wondered if Jesus would be willing? I, I've talked to so many people over the years have got so much guilt in their lives, so much anxiety, so much over things that they've done that are grievous, horrible things. And they wander around and they walk around and they want Jesus, but there's that question mark in their head, I believe that Jesus forgives, I'm just not sure they'd be willing to forgive this. It's too big, it's too bad, it's too ugly. And then Jesus comes to town. This guy sees him. And maybe against all of his reservations, he's like, no, I'm going for this. I'm going for this. Jesus, Jesus, because he's, he's separated from everybody else. He probably had to call Jesus. Jesus. Come on over. Jesus, Jesus. And he bows down and, and, God, I believe you're the Lord. I believe you can. Are you willing? Are you willing to do this for me? And Jesus reaches out. He says, I'm willing. Be clean. Don't tell anyone. Now, if you're that person, what are you going to do now? Don't tell anyone. The greatest thing that's ever happened in your life just happened to you. And Jesus says, don't tell anyone. This is the exact opposite of everything else that we teach, right? Of course you're going to tell someone. I mean, what do you do? You go home. Your family sees you. Yesterday you were living in the leper colony on the outside of town. Today you're you're good to go. What happened to you? Hmm, nothing. <laughs> and I think something happened to you. No, nothing, 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 nothing happened. Of course you're going to tell someone. I the, the, the reason that Jesus said this at this point in his ministry is because he still had a lot of ministry to do. And he didn't want to move things along quicker. He knew that he had enemies in the church. And I mean, he knew when he was, well, at some point in his young life, that he came to die on the cross. But not today. We got another two and a half years of ministry before we get that. But I'm not going to withhold my healing. I'm not going to withhold this sign that I am who I am. And this poor man comes to him. What's Jesus going to say? That's ah, not my time yet, man. No, I'm willing. I'm willing. Be healed. Back to the scripture. Now, here's your sign. He said, go to the priest and let him, so don't tell anyone, but go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. And the fourth one on your thing, you will be a sign. You're the sign. He's telling this man to follow the prescribed religious practices. You had to go to the Back in Leviticus, it said, if, you, if you've got this disease, when you're well, if you get well, you go back to the priest, he examines you to make sure that you're well, and then you go to the temple to offer your sacrifice for the Lord's healing. And it was a couple of doves, and there were some other things that, that you would offer. Here's what Jesus wanted. The very people that should have been heralding that Jesus was here, that the Messiah was here, the leaders in the church, the teachers of the law, were the ones who were against Jesus. So he didn't want this guy to go out and just tell everybody. He had certain people that he wanted to know. You go to the priest and you tell him, I'm healed. He knows the priest is going to say, you weren't healed yesterday. What happened? You know Jesus you heard about? That's what happened. Now this priest is in a dilemma because they don't like Jesus. But this guy's standing there healed. He's fulfilling his vows. He's giving his offering. He's doing what's right in the law. For us, God's activity in our lives is a sign. It speaks to people around us. The problem is that so often we want to hide the sign. We don't want people to know of God's activity in our lives. We kind of play it down. It's the reverse of this. But if you had been out in a leper colony and you were healed today, I don't think you'd be hiding it. 
I think you'd be running around telling everybody, Jesus touched me, Jesus healed me, Jesus made me whole. He is God, He is alive, and He is able. And He is willing. And if you go to Him, He's willing to heal you too. And then the very last part of it says, but despite, despite Jesus' instructions, the report of His power spread even faster, and vast crowds came to hear Him. Sorry, and vast ca- crowds came to hear Him preach and to be healed of their diseases. But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. This morning we're going to share communion. And there's a question that, that just came to me this morning. Jesus is willing. Are you willing? Jesus is willing. What are you willing to give Jesus? What part of your life do you hold back because you're not really sure if Jesus is willing to work on that area of your life? Or maybe you don't want Him to work on that area of your life. Or maybe you've tried healing in the past. Maybe there's an addiction or something, and you've you've tried in the past, and you've failed, and now you're kind of reluctant. I don't want to offer this up to Jesus because what if it doesn't work again? I'm not willing. And Jesus is there. He says, I'm willing. I'm willing. If you'll just come to me, I am willing. I will touch you, and I will make you whole. I will bring healing into your life if you will trust me. Now, what does that healing look like? It's not always physical healing. I like the term cracked pots. Do we use that term here? Cracked pots? We're all cracked pots, aren't we? You can be broken and yet whole. And that's the condition of of, of the Christian. We're broken and yet whole. We live in a broken world. We're broken people, but we serve God. We serve the Lord who is willing to make us whole even though we are broken. And sometimes He doesn't heal us of our sicknesses. You stay sick, but you have spiritual healing. You have emotional healing. That's so much more important. And you know where you're going. We're going to share communion together. Can I have those come forward, please, that are going to serve communion? If you want to just carefully take that off, because if I touch that, everything falls apart. All right, I lost a note. Talk amongst yourselves for a second. No, I was just joking. It's church. There's no talking in church. (laughs) Father's Day. Take one each. Father's Day. When you come to communion this morning, I want you to just think about that. Jesus, I am willing. The Father was willing to give the Son. The Son was willing to go to the cross. The Son was willing to die. And the Son is willing to heal and forgive. He says, bring me your brokenness. Bring me your hurt. Bring me your pain. Bring me that thing that you most regret in your life that brings you so much shame. Bring it to me because I am willing to heal and to make you whole. Are you willing to give it to Him? This morning as you come to communion, 
I'm going to invite you to take the bread, take the juice, take it back to your seat, and we'll share together. But I want you prayerfully, as we share communion this morning, to just think about those areas of your life that maybe you've been reluctant to give over to Jesus. And He's willing even to overlook that. I love you. And I know you're not going to give it to me today. I'm still willing to heal. I'm still your daddy. I still love you. And I'm going to keep working on you until you get to that place where you say, take it. And he says, I am willing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this Father's Day. I thank you that you were willing to give your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And Father, I thank you for Jesus' willingness to come and live amongst us. He came out of heaven. He was perfect. He was free of sin, free of anything, Father. And he came to live amongst us. And as we read through the Gospels, we see what a mess and how difficult we made it for him. We abused him. We spat on him. We beat him. We humiliated him. And yet he says, I am willing. Father, thank you for healing. Thank you for forgiveness of sin. Thank you for wholeness. Thank you for being willing to touch When you're ready, please come forward and take the bread and take the juice.
doesn't do justice. Little piece of bread, little thimble of juice. Uh, every time we do communion, I just feel like this. Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't do justice. Jesus said, I am willing. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Take and eat. blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Heavenly Father, as we come in this simple act of communion that you commanded, do this in remembrance of me. Father, it's such a simple thing, a little piece of bread and a thimble of juice. to commemorate such a massive thing. Thank you for your willingness to heal and to forgive. Father, may we come to you with every area of our life that we are reticent. Maybe we don't believe. Maybe we don't want to. Maybe we want to hold on. We come to you, Father. And I pray that you would work in our spirits in such a way that when we hold on to those things, you would open our hands and you would take from us that which hurts us because you are willing to bring wholeness and healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Oh, we've got some good things. Not that that wasn't good. <laughs> we have three more people to welcome into membership this morning. Last week we, we welcomed four, I think it was, and we have three more today. So, Brandon, you were not here last week. You were working. So, where's my wife? I know she wants to get a photo. Here she comes. Brandon Zaidi, welcome to membership at Lakeway. And Robin and Jane Sutton Brown. Been coming to Lakeway for six months? Seems something like that. Came from including that's right, they started online and then ventured here and they've come from sunny California to hot Texas. They're just getting a feel for that. <laughs> so and they live just down the road here. But it really has been a pleasure getting to know you both and uh I'm looking forward to see what God is going to do through you here at Lakeway. So, Jane, welcome to membership. Robin, welcome to membership. Here, come this side. Let's get a picture here. Ah, there we go. Thank you both. And I think there's a couple more coming. All right, what announcements do we have? Um, we did transformed. We're going to do a, a transformed follow-up. So if you're part of a small group, we're going to get some information to your small group leaders. It's important. I'm going to ask you all, if you're part of it, to, to do this little follow-up. There's about six or seven questions that will help us. Number one, help us to pray for you. Number two, as we do these church-wide campaigns, I, I just love the way it brings us together, but there's always room for improvement, so I want to kind of get your ideas. So that's going to be coming up. If you're not part of a small group next week, we're actually going to have a little insert that you can uh, fill out and just drop in the offering at the end of the service. What else we got going on? Our youth yesterday. Who got their car washed? I got my car washed. They raised $702 for their camp, which is pretty awesome, isn't it? They're going to camp July 5th to 9th, and uh, I want to thank the, 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 the leaders. They're not here right now. They're probably over there being tortured <laughs> for their, their willingness. And where? Nancy, where are you? Oh, Nancy's here. Nancy is a faithful leader. And John, is he over there? John is right there. They're here. <laughs> word for word, thought for thought, right there. <laughs> And Brandon and Courtney are over there, I imagine. Yeah. 
So that was awesome. So our youth are going to camp on July 5th to 9th. So please pray for them. Pray that God speaks into them. I, I don't know about you, but I know that kids that I've talk, talked to that have gone to camp, it's been a very powerful experience for them. I didn't have it when I was a teenager. I was a heathen. And thank you all for, for being a part of that. Vacation Bible School coming up July 19th. Oh, sorry, before that, Promise Keepers, July 16th to 17th. Paul, I saw Paul here. Where are you? Paul back there and Bob. If you're, men, if you're interested in Promise Keepers, see Paul. Um, this is a wonderful event. It takes place on a Friday and a Saturday. Tickets are normally a hundred and something dollars. We got these last year, and I think we're offering them for 50 is that correct? Which is a great deal. So see Paul. Do we have any left? Do you know Paul? We do have some left. So see Paul. It's really good. Vacation Bible School, July 19th to 23rd. Tickets coming soon. It's free. Out there in the foyer, if you want to register a kid, there's one of those codes. What are they called? QR, QR codes. <laughs> you can take a picture of it and register. I'm kind of in this century. <laughs> Mostly in this century. And uh, hey, if you've been looking for midweek, and you may have noticed I haven't done midweek for two weeks, and everybody goes, yes, Pastor Mike, I have earnestly been looking for that, and I've noticed <laughs> that it is missing. <laughs> I have not dropped doing midweek. I'm changing it to Pastor Mike's musings over the summer. It's something I'm going to do on occasion, maybe rather than every week. So keep your eye out for that. As you leave, two things. We don't pass our offering around. We ask that you, can be faith, you would be faithful with the offering. You can uh, give, put the offering in the offering bucket there. You can go online uh, or mail it, whatever you want to do. And on days when we share communion, we also ask that if you are able, above and beyond your offering and your tithe to the church, we ask that you would give a benevolence offering. This is money that we collect for people who are in need and uh, people that need their rent paid, whatever. None of that goes toward the church. So if you're able to do that, please do that. That's all I've got for you. 12.13, taking you a little bit over, but Jesus went over. I, I read about it. Did I not say anything about VBS? What am I supposed to say? Pay attention. I got it. Yeah, yeah. You, I said about the QR. <sighs> Married my daughter. He brings this dysfunction into the family. <laughs> Please stand. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks again. I thank you, Father, that you reach out and you touch us. I thank you for the worship today. It was just great. I pray your blessing, Father, upon each and every person that you've brought here this morning, those watching online. Father, pour out your blessing so that we may be a blessing. And Father, I pray that we would live our lives in such a way that we are a sign to a world out there that needs a sign that Jesus loves them, that Jesus cares, and that He is willing. Father, make me a sign. Make us a sign, I pray. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming.